two enormous legendary steam-powered locomotives. Can one crew haul both precious engines across the country to deliver them in time for a show-stopping event? I mean, we, we might still get there, but it's doubtful. A 126-ton heavyweight champion used to haul record-breaking cargo. The Class 66 is one of the heaviest locos that we would move in the UK. Can this team transport this Goliath over 200 miles across land? There she goes. And sea without sinking to doom. Glad I'm not out there in that rain. The crews must battle tight, winding roads. Give you some more luck now. Go on, keep going. Heavy metal. And hold-ups. Slight problem, all the brakes are on on this locomotive. A titanic task, even for the world's toughest train truckers. <laughs> Slicing a path through the Hampshire countryside runs a unique railway, a heritage line called the mid Hans. Steam-powered time machines whisk more than 130,000 visitors a year back to a forgotten era. Today, workers on the railway are gearing up for their biggest event of the year, their annual autumn steam gala. We've got three days of intensive uh, steam train running with goods trains, local trains, branch line things. Uh, but yeah, we'll burn in the midnight oil a little bit to get it all set up. Six steam locomotives will be on show at this year's gala event. Among them, two very special guests of honour. One is called Foxcoat Manor. The other is called Large Prairie 5199. Both locomotives were designed for the illustrious Great Western Railway. There was just something about the Great Western Railway that people loved. It oozes class, quality. It became the word in fast trains. It was just one of the biggest companies in the world. And it just did it with such flair and style. At its peak, the Great Western Railway was made up of 3,797 miles of track. It stretched as far north as Manchester and as far south as Penzance. The large prairie currently resides here, in the shadows of the Denbyshire Hills. It operates along a heritage railway that runs through Langochlan. A dedicated team of enthusiasts maintains this precious engine. This is Great Western Large Prairie Class 5199. It's a locomotive that was built in December 1934 in Swindon workshops in Wiltshire, where all the Great Western locomotives were actually built. Of the 140 large prairies that were built, today just two remain in steam. A number of locomotives, in fact about 200 of them, all ended up in a scrapyard in South Wales. This one cost us um, £6,000 plus VAT. That was in 1985. 34 years on, the large prairie is fully restored. But the engine hasn't got a licence to operate on the mainline railway that runs down to Hampshire. The only way to get it there is by road. Now there's heavy haulage. Heavy hauling specialists, Allerlees, are masters at moving trains by road. OK, when's your gala again? With 10 crews and a yard full of heavy haulage hardware, they can handle the toughest train trucking missions. Thanks a lot, good to meet you. Cheers. Five one double nine, Langothlan to the Midance. The crew need to collect the large prairie engine from Langothlan on Tuesday morning and navigate it 210 miles to Hampshire. On Wednesday morning, they'll unload and head 147 miles to the West Somerset Railway, where they'll load up the second engine, Foxcoat Manor. If everything goes to plan, three days and 504 epic miles later, both engines should reach their destination in time for the spectacular steam gala. It's Tuesday morning. At the wheel today is Zach Bancroft. At just 30, he's the youngest driver on the heavy haulage team. First challenge, navigate the 24-metre trailer into the tight rail yard. Go on. OK, keep going. It's down to Zach's second man. 
Alex Whitehouse to steer the trailer from behind. All good, mate. Go on. Trailer in place, the crew set to work. To load the engine, they must first build a ramp from the trailer to the rails. This will allow them to use a high-powered winch to pull the locomotive onto the trailer. They need to make sure that they support the ramp. A weak ramp could bend and collapse, wrecking this historic engine. Alex and Zach's reinforced ramp is ready to go. Let's see where uh, Mr. Shunterman is then. Is that the one we're having right there? No. No, that's a baby one. The large prairie is nowhere to be seen. Hello. We have to. Hello, Co. If possible. A scout of the yard reveals the engine is buried deep blocked by other engines and wagons. They need it shunting clear. Can't get in at the minute, just, uh, just waiting to get in. Occasionally it happens, so just wait for them to uh, finish and then we'll crack on with it. Rearranging the wagons in the congested loading yard is a painfully slow process. I'll get the winch straight on. Finally, the large prairie is ready to be winched up onto the trailer. OK. And the last one. Just go, uh, just go a little bit more, mate, please. Hold it there. I am happy with that. The large prairie is loaded and locked. But with two engines to deliver in just three days, Zach wanted to be well on his way by now. Quarter past four. Is it? I know, it's... Days wasted. You ain't gonna get all the way to that, are you? Nah. Loading the... Loco was fine, no issues. Everything went to plan, ran smoothly. It's just uh, a bit late in the day. We might still get there, but it's doubtful. It's looking doubtful. So, obviously, it puts things back. I'd say we're half a day behind already. Half a day could make all the difference if both engines are going to make it to the mid hand Steam Gala on time. Come well, on, mate, keep going. Keep coming, all clear. The road is yours, mate, going for it. But guiding this 28-metre-long, 128-ton truck around this nightmare 90-degree turn will test Zach's metal. Just try, Alex, try and get out without going up that kerb. Just keep it nice and tight. Come on, you're all right. Mate, can we do a shunt? This is going to pull some tyres off, this is. I can't shunt where I am. I'm about three inches off the wall on my left corner. I've got to come backwards. I can't go forwards. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. It takes 10 minutes of painstaking steering to shuffle the engine out of the yard. The pressure is now on escort driver Jason Priest. The last car is going to be a blue Volkswagen to navigate a path through the busy lanes. This is going to be interesting, isn't it? Do you want me to come around you? And out onto the main road. Can you see? Yeah, we're not clear at the moment. As soon as this car's gone... What is it? Aldi. Ready? Go on. All good, mate, all good. With daylight disappearing and 190 miles still to cover, this locomotive won't be pulling into its destination tonight. I'm just going to take this back to the yard, mate and just write the day off. Thank you, thank you.
It's day two of Zach and Alex's three-day race to deliver two historic locomotives to a spectacular steam gala in Hampshire. They have 125 miles left to travel to deliver their first engine, the large Prairie 5199, after an overnight stop at their headquarters. Of course, it's always nice to go home, but we've lost half a day now, so really, we should have been down there last night. So the next one we should have been loading this afternoon is now going to be tomorrow morning. So yeah, it's just, that's that roll-on effect all the way through the week. Zach's 680 brake horsepower, heavy haulage truck was only built as a left-hand drive, which makes junctions like this a nightmare to navigate. You're going to have to tell me, because... Uh... OK. Um, after this van, it's completely clear. Go on. I haven't got a gear yet. Got one now. Now? No, no, no. I want it there. I've got another van. After that, it's completely clear. Zach and Alex are en route to the historic mid Hans Railway here in Hampshire. The railway was built in the 1860s. It was a link from Winchester to Alton. One of the main reasons for the railway existing is actually a way of getting watercress into London uh, same day, which is something that had never been able to happen in before. Unfortunately, the capital's desire for the peppery garnish wasn't enough to sustain the line. The railway was closed in the early 1970s and a group of enthusiasts got together and uh, purchased the, the track and the, the rail from Allsford to Rockley. And that's the railway we have now, just, just a shade over 10 miles long. It has taken Zach and Alex over four hours to reach the historic railway line. It's wet once again, but won't stop us. It's nothing too bad. They need to unload fast so they can get back on the road to pick up the second engine. Hold it. Yeah, I got full slack. But the large prairie is stuck. It's just come behind the shin. <laughs> a small, raised piece of metal called a shin is creating enough resistance to stop the engine in its tracks. One solution would be to unhook the winch from the rear, move the truck to the front, and pull the locomotive over the obstacle. But with nothing to hold the loco back, it could roll rapidly out of control. You animal. Just sat on the shim. Time for plan B. Ratchet the 78-ton beast over the ridge by hand. Come on. Like that. Off you go, then. They keep a close eye on the engine as it rolls back onto the railway tracks. Just got to the point where it's trying to go uphill. It's not going to roll anymore. So we'll just we'll hold it there and then I'll bring the shunter down. One locomotive down. Yeah! One to go. We should be there tonight, ready for loading as soon as it's light, really, in the morning. This is Europort in Rotterdam. It's one of Europe's busiest sea terminals, handling up to 8 million containers a year. A unique train engine is waiting here for the Alilis crew to collect. It's called the Class 66. This is one of the world's hardest working locomotives. It's designed to haul massive freight loads from coal to cars. Class 66 is a good piece of kit. It is reliable, it can pull a lot, it will get the job done. 
The locomotive was designed and built in America. 455 were manufactured for use on railways across the world. And they've been very popular in Europe, in Belgium, Netherlands, Germany particularly. This Class 66 belongs to a Swiss operator. It needs transporting to the UK to undergo a special service. Its owners need it back, working on the rails as soon as possible. So time is of the essence. The crew need to load the locomotive onto a trailer so they can truck it onto a ferry bound for the UK. Uh, OK, yep, 66, right, nice, yeah, good size loco. These truckers have both the kit and the cunning to move this 126-tonne rail freight heavyweight. The Class 66 is one of the heaviest locos that we would move in the UK. Um, so you've got to make sure you've got the right piece of equipment that will shift it from uh, a port and across the ferries. The crew will need to travel just 150 metres when they arrive in Rotterdam, as the Class 66 is sitting waiting on the dockside. Once loaded, they must carefully drive onto the ferry. It's then a 204-mile, 11-hour sea crossing to reach the port of Hull. Once they arrive, they need to carefully disembark and travel to the other side of the port before they can unload the engine back onto railway tracks. The team need to load the Class 66 onto this ferry, the pride of Rotterdam. It's 215 metres long, well over twice the length of a standard football pitch. It has 530 cabins, it can carry 1,360 passengers, and its loading decks will swallow 250 vehicles. So there's plenty of room for supersized low loaders. The team's big guns arrive in Rotterdam. This 13-axle, 104-wheeled, modular trailer is designed to carry the heaviest of engines. Heading up this international excursion is Ian Baglady. With 38 years of trucking experience, Ian's one of the team's longest-serving drivers. Just taking the straps off the ramp, tidying them up, waiting for the forklift to, uh, to arrive. First task, use a forklift to assemble this ramp. It's being built specially to support heavyweight locomotives like the Class 66. Joining Ian on this European adventure... Please go out a bit. ..is second man, Jamie Turnbull. Ooh. To load the Class 66, Ian needs to reverse the trailer so it's lined up with the dockside railway lines and the oh. ramp. If the trailer or ramps are misaligned, this massive freight engine could derail and come crashing to the ground. The ship sails in nine hours' time. They need to hook up the winch and start hauling the engine. Already. But just as they get going... Nice and steady, because I think the brakes are on. ..they hit a problem. <laughs> They're always usually off. Hi, um, we have a slight problem. All the brakes are on on this locomotive. Um, so we can't move it. Stuck on a deserted dock 380 miles from base, Ian turns detective. Right, crank handle. So something's got to go in there. Parking. Yeah, something's got to go in there to turn it. I think you turn that and it releases it off, but I'm not sure. I would have thought that only releases the front. Finding a qualified driver around here to help could take hours. Good job we're not in a rush, isn't it? Yeah. But then again, it's 20 to 1 now. Ian and Jamie need to release the engine's brakes fast or they'll miss the ferry. It'd be disappointing to leave it sat there because obviously we've We've come, we've come over here, spent the time on the boat. So, yeah, it would be a, a bit annoying. It's 7.30 in the morning and Zach and Alex are at the West Somerset Railway, getting set to load up the second engine that needs hauling to the Steam Gala in Hampshire. We got into the railway last night at 8 o'clock. Just put the trailer on the line and that, that was it. My dinner last night consumed of bread, butter and marmite, and a lot of it. Yesterday was plagued by delays, so Zach needs the next move to run like clockwork. 
Today, they are loading the 69-year-old engine, Foxcote Manor. The Manor-class engines were first built by the Great Western Railway in 1938. Foxcote Manor was part of a second consignment, commissioned in 1950 by the newly formed British Rail. These locomotives were lightweight and fast, designed to haul both freight and passengers. But by 1965, all of the Manor-class locomotives had been withdrawn from service. Foxcote was sent to Barry Island Scrapyard in 1966, and it stayed there until 1974, when it was rescued from the scrapyard by the Foxcote Manor Society. With their ramp built, Zach and Alex are ready to start loading. Second wheel on, all right, yeah? And the next. And the last one. Lovely. Inch by inch, wheel by wheel, they painstakingly haul the 70-ton engine onto the trailer. Just slowly to you. Hold it there again. Rob, could you put your chock in tight, please, yeah? Providing this don't twang, this will be a perfect one. Loaded and locked. That was perfect. It's time for Zach, Alex and Foxcote Manor to hit the road. Right, you swing it over to the curb on the left, just keep it about a foot off. Okay. To deliver the engine, Zach and Alex need to first detour around Taunton's busy town centre. Then head 147 miles east to reach Hampshire and the mid Hants Railway. First obstacle, a tight turn. I'm uh, more this roundabout now. Alex may be able to control the trailer's rear wheels, but this roundabout is too tight for the 28-metre truck to negotiate. If they attempt to take the roundabout in the normal way, the truck would become wedged between the centre and the barriers, blocking the road to oncoming traffic. But Zach and Alex have a plan. We are going to stop the traffic coming from this direction. We're going to be wrong side in the roundabout here, as that's far too tight to get around. Shall I start coming out then? Yes, yeah, mate, start going now. Still clear your way. Still very clear. You'll see me at the pollard in a second. I'll see you through the edge. Ah, uh, go on, keep going. Right, if you can just tell them, the, the cars, that is, just to stay there and then just come to the back of the trailer for me. This manoeuvre isn't in the highway code. Go on, you're OK. Keep going, perfect, go on. You're all right on your back end, mate. Take it right round, completely clear. Go on, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, blowing around there, mate. Perfect. Perfect, mate. Uh, just run up in front of me, wave a few cars through, and then we'll get this ambulance through. He's got his blues on, look. OK. OK, Alex, jump in. It's midday, and there are 123 miles still to go. They must get a move on, as Foxcote Manor needs to be under steam before the end of the day. In Rotterdam, Ian and Jamie are on a mission to load the supersized Class 66 freight engine onto their trailer. It's now uh, one o'clock, so we're waiting to go down now. It's booked on the 8.30 ferry tonight, bound for the UK. But with its brakes locked on, right now, it's going nowhere. This fella here is um, the man who's going to take all the brakes off the train for me. We hope. As easy as that. 
as easy as that. Easy as that, yes. <laughs> With the brakes finally off, Ian and Jamie must start loading. Time is tight. There she goes. Just making sure that the, uh, the wheels go up onto uh, our points, onto the ramp, uh, without any issues. Yeah, looking spot on. All good. With the engine loaded. Hold it there, man. In. They ensure it stays put. One pulling back from there, down to that. But the rest of them pulling forward. It takes 24 metres of chains to secure this 126 tonne giant. They race to pack up the ramp. The plan now, we finished tying this down and then uh, go and sit round by the boat and wait, wait to be called on. Vehicles are already being guided onto the ferry. Positioning a load as heavy as the Class 66 on a ship takes great skill. When loading a locomotive, we have to uh, take into account the weight to make sure it's equally distributed across the deck and it's in the right spot. And to make sure that the ship uh, leaves the port level so that it's not listing to one side or to the other side. The crew must place heavy cargo at the boat's stern. So Ian's 212-ton truck will be the last vehicle to board. They're all good on the back one. Glad I'm not out there in that rain. Where you want it, mate? In front of the small cars. Where the Range Rover is. This sword, mate, this sword. See where the Range Rover is, this sword. OK. Keep it coming, mate, all good. Guiding this monster trailer across the ferry's ramp is a challenge in the lashing rain. Don't get too close to that to my side, mate, please. Yeah, keep going, mate. Just come up to the ramp. Nice and steady, we'll watch the hole, it's keep coming. The angle of the ramp changes between the edge of the dock and the ferry. This creates a lip that can catch the underside of the trailer. A bump or knock here could unbalance the oversized load. Stay there, lift the back up, stay there. They use hydraulics to raise the height of the trailer so it will clear the ramp. <laughs> We're all good on the door, mate. Keep coming. Keep it coming, mate. Go on. All good, mate. Keep coming. Close to the middle as you possibly can. Well, I don't think they're going to get that because I can't see a thing. Keep coming, mate. That's good, that is. Keep coming. Come back nice and straight on out. It shouldn't be too bad. Keep coming. Four metres. Nice and steady, then. Two. Keep coming, mate. Keep coming. One metre, nice and steady then. Somewhere there, mate, will do, I reckon. No, OK, mate? That bloke there, happy, yeah? OK? Yeah. All good. Yeah. All good, mate. Tray. On truck, on boat. Job done. Just a few issues. Uh, obviously, uh, lifting and lowering the trailer to get over the um, link span ramp onto the boat. But no, no major problems, it was fine. It's just a case of leaving it. Now the, uh, the gents on the boat to tie it all down, make sure it's uh, safe for sea, and uh, we're good to go. Up onto the boat now, uh, get our rooms, and uh, relax with a couple of beers for the night. In Hampshire... Pump's going in now. 
Oh, all right, thank you. Foxcote Manor is just one very tight corner away from its destination. Go on, then. Take it forwards. Zach hands control of the rear wheels over to Alex. Go on. Keep going. Go on. You're OK. Go on. Keep going, mate. Go on. Give you some more luck now. Go on, keep going. All right, on that inside kerb and the bill and the calf, yeah? Loads of room up the inside, bro. Go on. It's going around nice now. This will be a tight squeeze. Go on. Keep going. I'm out of that bend now. They make it into the rail yard. The, that tender, the rail, how far are the wheels from the end of the rail? Still got another four foot. But there's not enough room to unload. Chaps, could we get the tender as far back as we can? Just, is that all right? Just give us a bit more room, because at the minute I won't get the truck in behind. What we need to do is push that backwards. Four foot, so we've got maximum amount of space to work with. Looking quite tight. No problem, though. Better, isn't it? Break on, please, chap. They're in a race against daylight to unload the engine. Foxcote Manor's chief engineer, Martin Fuller, isn't hanging around either. We haven't got much time. We are doing a kind of fitness to run exam. So Chief Boiler Smith has just climbed in there. So he's checking the firebox. We can't light a fire until he's satisfied that, um, you know, that the engine is fit for, for purpose. It's time to unload this great Western heavyweight. Right. Slowly to you. To you. Go. Like Large Prairie, Foxcote Manor needs to some you. gentle persuasion to roll off the trailer. Uh, it just sat on the sat on the shim again, but it, it's fine. It's going again now. Look, Alex, yeah. give me some more slack, please. Zach keeps careful watch. If the ramp moves, all 70 tons of this vintage engine will come crashing to the ground. All done then, sorted. Job done. Two steam locomotives delivered in time for the gala. Just. Week's, uh, it's gone well, everything's gone to plan. Uh, a little bit slower than we'd have liked. We sh really, this should have been off sort of lunchtime-ish today, but it's here, it's ready. They're already lighting a fire in it, so, uh, yeah, successful. Zach and Alex need fuel of their own. I have a bit of food. Chips, chicken, a bit of bread. <laughs> and they call it a kebab. <laughs> See you tomorrow, guys. See you later. Right. Yeah. By the time the thing's come round into steam, we've done a bit of oiling and we've connected it up to the tender. And, uh, we're going to be... Uh, well out of hours for a pint. Foxcote is timetabled to be the first engine out tomorrow. The pressure is well and truly on. It's a busy morning in the port of Hull. More than 10 million tonnes of freight and 1 million passengers pass through this vital transport hub every year. On board the Pride of Rotterdam Ferry, Ian's team waits to disembark with the 126-tonne freight train. Nice sleep, nice breakfast, ready for another day. Just waiting for the doors to open so we can get some air into the trailer, start the truck up, so we can rise the trailer and get ready to uh, get off the boat. The door's broke on the boat, so we can't get off. On a Sunday morning, it's not what we want. The car decks are full, 
but no one can go anywhere until this door is fixed. It's not raining. The owners of the Class 66 want it serviced and back in Switzerland as fast as possible. Delays like this are not welcome. Come on, please. I want to go home. It takes 30 minutes. Go on, keep going. To get the 20 ton loading doors open. God, all good, mate. What's the ramp like, or all? Uh, the last little bit is a bit sharp. You might have to uh, mess about with it, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. Nice and steady, eh? Stay there, I'll just lift it up top. There's a shipload of trucks waiting to disembark, but driving this monster engine down the slippery ramp can't be rushed. Still low, but keep going. Keep going. Nice and steady, then. Just coming down the sharp bit now. Keep going. Keep going. Go on. Yeah, all good. The truck is finally off the boat. You don't want to be sat on here too long. Next task, Ian needs to take the Class 66 a short distance to the port's rail tracks. Go on, mate. All good. Keep going, mate. Keep going. Loads of room on the door, I think, mate. Go on. Once unloaded, the engine will be shunted to a depot where it will be overhauled. Go on, mate. Go on. I can't pull that with that much lock on. Yeah, it's coming off now. Go on. OK. We're just waiting for our truck to come round now with the uh, ramp. Um, he'll set that up behind us and then we'll back up to him. And here he is as we speak. Come on, Roy Stern! The delays on the ferry put Ian's team under extra pressure to unload. But there's a problem. I can't put two locos on there at once. Right. I need all of this on this bit. On... The team have yeah. been building the ramp in the wrong place. Part of the dockside is suspended on pillars. This means it can only support vehicles weighing less than 180 tonnes. If Ian and Jamie unload the locomotive here, when the shunter arrives to take it away, the combined weight of the two engines could trigger a catastrophic collapse. I need to keep the front of the loco as close to here as possible. Right. Yeah, so we need... Yeah, OK. I'll have to move down. The ramp has to move and the truck. So that should do. And reset. 20 minutes later... You take these chains off. Ian's team are finally ready to roll. Come straight back as we are, it should be all right. Go on, then, keep coming. Steady. Bit more. Stay there. Just blocking the back of the trailer so it keeps it all supported. It's time to get the Class 66 back on the tracks. With 126 tonnes of rolling mass, the engine slips off the trailer. All good. That's normal. Mission complete. We're all done, then. Ian and Jamie pack up and head out. Once at the service depot, it will take three months for engineers to overhaul this giant and get it back hauling freight along the tracks. It's the morning of the Great Steam Gala in Hampshire and the steam is well and truly rising. Enthusiasts are arriving on the platforms for a packed timetable headed up 
by the two star great Western engines. Large Prairie's boiler has just been topped up, while late night arrival Foxcote Manor is in the station. And more importantly, in steam. So as you can see, we finished putting the engine together. Um, we got some steam in it and we got it up here fairly late last night. Last engine on last night, it's first engine off this morning and the driver's just turning up. She's all ready to go. Well, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Glorious October morning, absolutely beautiful sunrise and uh, steam engines everywhere. The atmosphere, fantastic. This is why we do it. The platform is beginning to fill up and expectations are high. Particular interest in uh, Great Western Loco, so you know the fact that Foxcott Man is here, and they've got, also got a large prairie that's uh, made it rather special. I've come up from Sussex to uh, see the manor that they've got. I like anything different, so if there's something I haven't seen before, then it'll attract me. I used to live in the West Midlands. We were on the Great Western, so I haven't seen one for. 50 or 60 years, so it's nice to actually see one again. Steam junkies have travelled from far and wide to see two great Western locos. And here they are. The team have worked their magic. Foxcote Manor is pulling in tandem with Large Prairie 5199. The Steam Gala is well and truly up and running. It's pretty intensive. It's a lot of effort for three days, but it's a bit of fun. It's a lot for the volunteers and the, and the enthusiasts, you know, so it's a good, a good bit of fun for them. But the stars of the show are the two legends of the Great Western Railway. By bringing in different engines from different railways, it, it brings enthusiasts back just to see something different. Hopefully it, uh, it fills the till up with a bit of luck. You know.